Tonight on the Philly Tall Podcast, we got breaking news. Y'all know the NBA draft is going on, and I wish I was live, but the Sixers just sent the 23 overall pick, which was David Rodney and Danny Green to the Memphis Grizzlies for point guard DeAnthony Melton. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike. Talking sixes in the bird game, that's our life. Competition, we ain't scared, yeah, that's what we like. Win or lose, you know we showing up and we gon' fight. Uh, you see, we strive for the sky every day that go by. And every single week we scream and fly, eagles fly. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Talk Podcast, and today we got a lot to talk about, but before we do that, Sixer Nation, help your boy out and hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and ding that notification bell so you know when these videos drop or when we go live. Again, sorry I couldn't be live, got home a little bit after the draft started, but we thought the Sixers were going to do something. We heard Eric Gordon's name be flown around, P.J. Tucker is a possible signing we could still do. Um... But DeAnthony Melton, out of the blue, there was no rumors that he was on our radar. And the funny thing is, four years ago, if you look it up, it says he was drafted to the uh, Phoenix Suns. No, 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 no. Daryl Morey drafted him in the second round, pick 46 overall. So he's picked 46 overall in 2018, second round, pick 16 in the second round. And then Daryl Morey moved him for whatever he wanted to move him for. Now, he's grown as a player. He's a guy who can get to the rim and yam it. If you type his name on YouTube, he's going to pop up with a, with, a, with a nasty dunk on the Golden State Warriors. Um, it, it was their backups, but it was a high-flying dunk. For 6'2 point guard, he can rebound, he can facilitate, he can play defense. And I said he can get to the rim and slam it for his size. What we want him to get better at is the three-point shot. Well, he's shooting about 29.5%, 30%. But who else shot that bad when they came out of college? Oh, Tyrese Maxey. So hopefully, being behind him, seeing a young guard flourish with the Sixers, he says, you know what, let me step up because that's all he's missing to be a consistent player. Again, you saw the Kentucky point guard, T.Y.T.Y. Washington Jr. Hey. We just had success with a point guard from Kentucky and Tyrese Maxey, who again shot 29% and now went up to 40%. You can't go wrong there. And uh, EJ Lytle, the Ohio State player, he was another guy that you could possibly have taken at that point. But we didn't. We moved the 23 overall pick. And Danny Green, who's not going to play next year pretty much, it was a salary dump. We only going to save $2 million because... I believe DeAnthony Melton's deal was eight, $8 million. Danny Green was $10 million. So it's neither here or there. Say it makes a little bit of room. We're going to have to go to the luxury tax to get a P.J. Tucker type player. We're not done. But DeAnthony Melton is a solid player off the bench. I honestly feel more confident in him than a Furcon Korkmaz, a Shake Milton. Again, when you hear the name, you kind of fall back. If you go ahead and type up his career stats, it's going to say, in 2018, he played with the Phoenix Suns, only played about 19.7 minutes, five points per game. Then he bumped it up to seven points per game. Then he bumped it up to nine points per game. Then he bumps it up to about 11 points per game, 40% from the field. But look, his rebounds go up. His assists almost go up. Little uh, His assists stay the same. But he's a do-it-all type player, a guy that's going to be depth because you got James Harden running point with Maxi running point when he's off. So it's some depth for this unit, which we need depth. We're not done. Tobias Harris is still on the table to be traded. Um, a couple other players, Matisse Steibel, is on the table to be traded. We heard rumors that the Portland Blazers are interested in him straight up. I don't know what we would want from them. Daryl Morey was looking to make it a three-team trade. That hasn't happened yet, but we still got free agency. It's a start. But to make you feel a little bit better about DeAnthony Melton, if you don't really know him, is what the Memphis Grizzlies trusted him with in round two of the NBA playoffs. As you see, Golden State Warriors from May 1st to May 13th. Remember, the Grizzlies played them six games. He was, a, he was given 25 minutes in game one, 26 minutes in game two, 27 minutes in game three, 
Only nine minutes in game four, but 24 in game five and 11 minutes in game six. Again, 10 points in one game, 12 points. And if you're getting 20 minutes and scoring 10 to 12 points off the bench for a loaded Grizzlies team, think about that Grizzlies team. They were winning with Jaw and without Jaw. They're deep. Their team overall is deeper than the Sixers. We're just better because of Joel Embiid. He's MVP in my eyes. But when you look at that team, take John ja Moran off, take Joel Embiid off. The Grizzlies are better than the Sixers, and that's why he couldn't really climb up that depth chart. But if you look at John ja Morant, he's already sad. When you got a guy who kind of does it all and is a scrappy player and you lose that guy, you look back and say, dang. And he's a young player, and I think Daryl Morey moved him because he's the big name hunter, as people call him, when he was a youngin, didn't want him in Houston, and kind of say, you know what? He's shaping up to be a player that I thought he could be. I'm not really feeling these guys in the draft, so let's do it. But there's moves that were made. This move that was made is not the end-all, be-all. We're not saying DeAnthony Melton, blah, 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 because we got to fill not only starters now, but depth pieces, because we can't be relying on Fur Concord, my Shake Milton. Right? They're inconsistent. Niang was inconsistent at the end of the season in the playoffs when it really mattered. Right? With that being said, DeAnthony Melton can play defense. He's growing as a player. If there's one thing I say, please, God, he got to get better at or he's never going to be the player we want him to be is the three-point shot. You know? But we saw Maxie do it in Philly. Maybe we got a good shooting coach. He's going to be around guys who are going to force the practice issue. But four years in the league, he's grown each time. He's a scrappy player. He's a athletic player, right? We want rebounding. He's 6'2", could probably rebound better than most of our players. So when you look at the whole scheme of things, when you look at everything, you know, who is EJ Lytle? Who is he going to be in the league? Who is T.Y. T.Y. Washington? I know he got that Kentucky name to him, but who really is he? So I can't be upset about it. It caught me off guard because when you are at that point, I'm watching it on TV, I'm like, okay, we're going to draft somebody. And then after drafting somebody, maybe we'll trade. So I'm watching on TV, watching on TV, and of course I got my phone in my hand, and what happens? Shams, Woj, they let me know, and I'm about to run up here, and I'm about to make the video, and I had to cut my first video off because then I look and see Keith Pompey says, not only was it the 23rd overall pick, it was Danny Green, but I understand that. It's a salary dump. We're, we're, we're trying to make moves. We're trying to create a lineup for 2023, 2022, 2023 season. Think about this. Tobias might, might be moved. Thibel might be moved. Who are, your, who are your for sure players on this team? Embiid, Maxi, Harden. That's three. You need to get two starters and three depth pieces that, that are high quality. You need that. Papa, go, go with mommy. Son's upstairs. <laughs> it's crazy. See, you know, <laughs> when the draft is on, everybody's up in my household. But at the end of the day, um, who knows what Thibault's going to be? Who knows where Thibault's going to be? Who knows where Tobias is going to be? If they are on the roster, even though we think Thibault's unplayable, he's going to fit into a possible starter, possible bench role. Huh? How good is that? Tobias Harris with that money, he's going to start, of course. If he's back, he's a starter. But still, you still got starters and bench players you got to kind of figure out. That's where the Eric Gordon could possibly come in, a P.J. Tucker could possibly come in. Um, but maybe when the Rockets landed, um, who did they get number three? The guy that fell to number three, forgot his name. Let me look it up real quick. I don't know if it was going to tell me. I'll go to the ESPN app. Maybe it will tell me on there. But, um, yeah, so Jabari Smith Jr. When the Rockets drafted Jabari Smith Jr., who they didn't think they were going to get, that could have impacted, hmm, now we got Jabari Smith Jr., a power forward. Maybe now we go ahead and keep Eric Gordon as depth shooting guard because now you're starting to make a little roster, right? Houston's trying to have a comeback. I thought that they thought he wasn't going to be there, and so that could have changed their mind, or maybe there was just smoke and screen, smoke and fire, smoke screens throughout the whole process, but the Philadelphia 76ers still got work to do. There are free agents out there. P.J. Tucker, most likely, if not re-signed by the, or if not going, if he doesn't go back to the Miami Heat with his player option, he's going to look at the Philadelphia Sixers. But we got at least one starter and other pieces.
Could there be a big name out there? Could Daryl Morey play the puppet game and, and figure something out? Possible. But DeAnthony Melton is someone that we are going to uh, use as probably a seventh or eighth man. Again, depending on what we do with Niang. If Niang's the first one off the bench, you have a problem there, right? Even Melton might be able to get off the bench over a guy like that in a sense of athleticism, pushing the ball, and be able to go down low. But we got guys who can do that, right? If Harris is on the squad, he he wants to work from the mid-range inside. He'll shoot threes once in a while, but mid-range inside, and Embiid can do it all, but we want him on the block. So you really want shooters around guys like Giannis and Embiid. That's why the Bucks are successful. They got shooters all around the board. Their, their center can shoot threes. We're getting guys like DeAnthony De Melton who who could grow into it, but he's not there yet, and that's going to limit him. If you got the uh, Harden, who's now shooting threes at a lower rate, like he don't shoot them and he's not efficient. If you got Harden, Tobias, and, and Embiid, well, now you got three guys where you don't really want shooting threes. You got me, and you, you got Melton over there. Like, who do you want to spread it out to? It, it gets tough. Can Tobias hit threes? Harden hit threes? Melton hit threes? Yeah. But it's still going to allow, when they're off, the double team to come to Joel Embiid. So I think this roster still got a lot to do. But again, we are in June. The roster ain't finished. We got to figure a lot out, right? We hear the rumors that uh, Harden's not going to sign his player option and then take a two-year deal. We don't know what the money's tied to that. That all plays a factor. If Harden takes a two-year deal at big-time money, well, our, our choices are limited now. So we still got a lot of stuff riding on Harden, a lot of stuff riding on Fiebel, a lot of stuff riding on Harris. And all that comes back to general manager or president of basketball operations, Daryl Morey. Figure it out. The Harris situation, the Harden money situation, because we know we're, we know we're going to have him next year. That's a fact. But for how much? And then figure out the Fiebel situation. I appreciate y'all for listening. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. What was your instant reaction? And then after you calm down 10, 15, 20 minutes later, what was your after? I want both reactions. If you made it this long, let me know your instant reaction and then your uh, relax action. Let me know. Until next time, you know what time it is. We out.